Okay, so what I want to show you here is a demonstration of uh, a hydrate lab being conducted. The substance that is being heated is CuSO4, copper 2-sulfate or cupric sulfate, hydrated, meaning there's water molecules trapped in the crystal structure. Uh, so I want you to watch, uh, and then uh, we'll do the calculations when we're finished. So it's copper sulfate. Now, they tell you it's pentahydrate. We're going to figure that out based on the math. Um, and so uh, what this teacher does here is they first clean the crucible and so then you have to dry it because you know water is pretty heavy so cleaned it out heated the Bunsen burner heat it up for a few minutes get rid of the water um, and then allow it to cool before you put it on the balance remember we talked about that in our lab we do not pick something up and put it on the balance with the crucible tongs like happens here we want to wait until it's cool enough that you can pick it up with your hands uh, then it'll give us a proper mass and we don't have to worry about messing up the balance so we're gonna pick it up by our hand put it on there so here's the first mass uh, that we're looking for which is the mass of the empty crucible so the mass of the empty crucible 12.73 grams All right, so now we're going to go get some CuSO4 hydrated. It's blue, pretty cool looking crystals. Uh, we're dumping those into the crucible. This is a skill we've learned in lab all year. And now we have the mass of the crucible with the hydrate. So we can't just pour the solid on the balance, so it's sort of our container. We get 24.11 grams, so that's the crucible plus the hydrate. So now what we're going to do is we're going to heat this sucker to get rid of the water. So we put it under the Bunsen burner, and you can see pretty neat camera work there, 10 minutes and 10 seconds, and you can see this particular hydrate is neat because it changes color. It goes from blue to white. So now we've driven off the water. We've broken that weak bond between the CuSO4 and the water, and we got to let it cool again. So then once we let it cool, we can pick it up, again, with our hand, put it on the balance, so now the next mass we need then is what happened? Well, the water was heated away, um, and now we have 20.01 grams. So now we have all the information we need to solve um, the math. So the math involved is going to be, um, we are going to, number one, we want to find out what is the mass of the anhydrate. Remember, the anhydrate is the mass uh, of the hydrate after the water has been removed. A hydrate becomes an anhydrate or an anhydrous solid. Uh, the second thing is, how many grams of water do we have? Or how many grams of water, more correctly, were removed from the hydrate? The third thing then we're going to calculate is, what is the percentage of water in that hydrate? And then the fourth thing would be, Calculate your experimental formula. So what is your mole ratio, according to your data, between the CuSO4 and the water? And then the fifth thing that we'll do is we're going to name that hydrate. All right, so given that information, um, the crucible was 12.73, the crucible and the hydrate was 24.11, and then the crucible and the anhydrate is 20.01 grams. All right, so we know our formula is CuSO4 dot in a certain number of water molecules. That's what we're going to try to determine though experimentally is how many moles of water are trapped in each mole of the CuSO4. So a 1 to what? 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, 1 to 6, whatever that ratio is in moles. All right, so number one, what is the mass of the anhydrate? Now we could actually get that directly, but I want to uh, w walk you through these steps. So the first thing I want to do is let's find out how many grams of the hydrate we have. So the blue stuff that he measured in the very start um, would be 24.11 grams with the crucible and the blue stuff. So minus 12.73 grams, uh, and you get just the mass of the CuSO4 dot and how many water molecules, the hydrate. So 24.11 minus 12.73. Uh, and we get 11.38 grams. Now this is the grams of the hydrate. So this guy right here with both of those in it had a mass of 11.38. Okay, the other piece of information we're given then is the crucible and the anhydrate. All right, so let's do the anhydrate's mass. Well, that would be 20.01 grams minus, again, the mass of the empty crucible. So 20.01 
minus 12.73, and we get 7.28 grams. All right, so now that is the mass of the anhydrate, the mass of the solid white stuff that was left over after the water was removed. So now we're talking just the mass of the CuSO4. So instead of just saying the anhydrate, we could actually say this is the copper sulfate's mass. All right, so from there. All right, so now question one, what's the mass of the anhydrate? Well, I just figured it out. I have 7.28 grams of CuSO4 in that 11.38 grams of uh, the hydrate. Now, that, this is a unique lab. This is one we tend to do in lab because it has a color change. Hydrated copper sulfate is blue. Anhydrous copper sulfate is white. Uh, so you can actually see the color change. Now, if this was a white solid, and really in this lab as well, you probably should heat it one more time. So, yeah, we got 20.01, but we should allow it to heat it again um, and then measure it again. Now, the reason for that would be we would know for sure if the mass stayed the same that all the water was gone. So that's really what we're trying to find out. And if it went down again, we know there was a little water left. And then really we should heat it again. So if this was a white solid, it would still be white, but we would measure the mass. It went down. Heat it again, measure the mass again. If it didn't go down, then we knew we got rid of all the water. If it did go down, again, heat it one more time and keep heating it until the mass does not change. Then you know all the water is gone. Okay, so now our second calculation. What is the mass of water? So the mass of water would be the hydrate, which is the CuSO4 and the water, was 11.38. The CuSO4 is 7.28. So we have 11.38 minus 7.28, I know, easy math, shouldn't use the calculator, 4.10 grams of H2O. So now I have the mass of water, I have the mass of CuSO4, and I have all the information I need then to solve the rest of the calculations. All right, so what would be the percent of water? The percent of water is going to be equal to the mass of water. 4.10 grams. Remember, part over the whole times 100. So what number do I want to use down there? Well, I want to use the mass of this whole thing, this copper sulfate and the water, which was the mass of the hydrate, 38 grams times 100. So I get 4.10 divided by 11.38 times 100, and it comes out to be 36%. So the mass of, or the percentage of water in copper 2 sulfate, the hydrate that we did the lab with, um, is 36% water. Okay, so now for the formula. All right, well, to do an empirical formula, or a, sorry, a hydrate formula, we need to know the grams of the substance, the grams of the water, and then we need a mole ratio between the two. So now it's just like the hydrate calculations we did before. Uh, we're going to divide this by, their mol by its molar mass, 159.6, 18. Uh, get moles, so 7.28 divided by 159.6, uh, and we get 0 0.04561. Keeping some extra significant digits again to get our ratios right. So we have 4.10 divided by 18. I get 0.2278 moles. Now to get the ratio, I divide by the smaller one. It comes out to be a 1. And 0.04561, a 4.99. So remember, this is the part where we want to evaluate. Does it come out to be a whole number? It should. Now this is a lab. Labs don't always work out perfectly. Uh, so we're not going to look for decimal equivalence there. We're going to look for whole numbers. If it's not a whole number and it's a lab, we're going to round it to a whole number. All right, so now I ran completely out of space, so let me erase this middle part here. Uh, and the formula would be CuSO4.5 H2Os. So this would be cupric sulfate pentahydrate, or copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. Uh, so there's those calculations.